Welcome to the Action Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Action Group. You can check us out at www.theoxengroup.com for all of your needs for financial analysis and investment opportunities in today's market. <clears throat> On tonight's Action Group Nightly, we're going to be uh, looking at our June 20th recap. We're going to be looking at our wrap up here for Monday, looking at a couple new positions and current positions that we have going on right now, as well as some of the recent recommendations we've made, some updates on some of our other portfolios, and also, as always, we'll be forecasting the day coming up tomorrow and check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Um, so the market continues to perform well. Um, you wouldn't know it if you watched the news, and you wouldn't know it if you talked to anyone, but we've actually had uh, several updates. I think it's five out of six days up. Um, one of those days is pretty flat, so uh, about four out of six updates. Um, and it was pushed higher today by a combination of uh, PNC Bank. Uh, they bought out a, a, a U.S. unit of Royal Bank of Canada for $3.5 billion. Mergers and acquisitions are always very positive for the market, and anytime you can get one, um, it can tend to lead to um, some good buying, especially um, within a sector. Uh, however, financials have been very weak and continue to be weak today. Um, we saw a number of reasons, though, as well to get into the market this week. Um, there's a lot of really big companies reporting earnings this week, and a lot of them look to be pretty solid. And given that we haven't had a really large earnings report um, in a couple weeks, um, and a lot of attention has just been drawn to macroeconomic issues, um, reverting to microeconomic sort of um, what's going on, with uh, corporate America, and which is what we're buying the stocks in, is actually, I think, a very positive thing for the market, and I think can allow us to have another good week this week. Um, the EU was taking steps back on the EU bailout today, which did weigh on the markets early on in the day, but that was quickly reversed. Um, and I do think that we will get the vote of confidence for Greece tomorrow, and my guess is that that will probably be pretty solid um, from the EU, um, which will basically say, well, hey, we're going to bail these guys out. Long term, maybe not the greatest idea. Short term, probably will help the market to get some um, rally going um, for the rest of the week as well. So we are a bit, bit bullish going through this week. Um, you know, it wasn't any real pertinent economic data out today, so we did look, check out an interesting chart we got from Business Insider's chart of the day. This is from Money Game um, and the Federal Reserve. And during the current reset, during the current recovery process from the end of recession, um, during the post-war recession average the number the amount of debt this is the amount of debt that households took on um, and you can see that it was a pretty solid right after recovery debt started to be just added on again well now you can actually see we're actually still deleveraging um, debt and this gives you a pretty pretty good picture of the type of economy we're in these days where people have so much debt on hand that they can't deleverage that debt even at all because or they can't take on new debt because they still need to deleverage themselves from debt. Um, you know, when the recession occurred, yeah, boom, we had all this, we had the problems, people lost everything. Um, but then when they when the economy started to boom again, people just started to take on new debt levels. I, in one in one sense, this is bad because we aren't able to take on new debt now because we have so much. At the same time, we do have we do have at least the glimmer of hope that hey, households aren't taking on at least new debt on top of the debt. And we have seen delinquency rates and credit, um, besides it, last, it was up in the last month, but for the most part, credit's been down. Um, and so that has been somewhat bullish. So I think this is a mixed chart, um, but it was an interesting chart I found. I thought it was interesting to look at the very different type of recovery we're having compared to the, after the Great Depression. Um, we did have another solid update in the market today. Uh, we moved to the upside on a declining dollar, uh, the merger and acquisition news. Um, and really, after we got close to 12,100, <laughs> again, I, we have said this again and again and again, 12,100 is a top. Um, right now we see, and the market flattened after it hit it, couldn't break out of it. Now, I do think we're at a point right now where we could break out of this 12,100 spot. Um, we do have a number of really important earnings, as I said, coming up throughout this week. We do have the vote of confidence from Greece coming up tomorrow as well. This could push us over that, and I think if we can get past 12,100, we will get another resistance line at 12,200. Um, I do see another resistance line there. If we break that, though, we could be really seeing another very nice bullish um, rally starting to form. And I, I know it sounds crazy to say that, but I think you do have to speculate that that could happen. 
Um, one of the reasons, one of the companies that we really like this week that we think has a lot of potential is Discover Financial Services. Uh, moving into earnings, they look very solid um, to probably push up to about 24. They've got a really nice um, sort of higher highs being formed. I'm sorry, higher lows being formed each day for the last five consecutive days. Um, really had a nice bounce off this price channel. They're in an upwards price channel. Broke above its 20-day uh, moving average today. Uh, has a 50-day moving average about at 24, so it has nice support below it now. A little bit of resistance at 24. We think the stock can definitely go to 24 before their earnings report on Thursday morning. Um, so we look for them to bounce again tomorrow and Wednesday. And um, this company is supposed to um, double earnings per share. Uh, supposed to see 10% plus revenue growth. So a lot of good things going on for them, and we're very um, bullish on them. Um, we also uh, have been holding some USO calls. Um, we bought them um, back on uh, Thursday, um, doubled down on them on Friday, and then uh, the uh, USO did actually recover. The oil did recover today. I do think we have a bottom at 36 on, on the USO, and I think oil has a bottom at 92. Um, we broke above, back above our 200-day moving average today. Um, which was very good for the uh, the oil trade, and um, that would definitely lend a support to that we will continue to rally into tomorrow. Um, I do think that we do have a lot of worry. We can have worries on the oil trade. I think that you know there are things that are going against it. But when you have this, when you have oil speculation that it's going to be at a hundred to one hundred twenty dollars a barrel by the end of the year, even on the WTI, and you're at ninety two dollars, you know. And you've seen support throughout the year at $92 a barrel. We had one break below 92 and 91, and that was it. And that was during a Japanese crisis that was probably the largest crisis we're going to have of the year. Um, knock on wood. Um, and you know this this trend is obviously crossed by the Greek crisis. But that Greek crisis, I think, you know, okay, we we priced it in, and and you know everyone's saying, oh, we're going to $85 now. Okay, we're not going to eighty five dollars a barrel on oil. I mean, the the amount of the amount of demand that's out there for two consecutive weeks, we've seen supply being drawn down. We've got countries that cannot produce any more oil, and they and there is the talk continually that we don't have enough oil to meet demand right now. And the only country that seems to be able to produce more is Saudi Arabia, and one country alone can't produce enough to supply enough oil for these. Um, for the type of demand we're seeing, and so we're very bullish on USO from ninety two. I think when it's at, I thought I thought when it was at one hundred two, we were had a lot of things that were saying we should probably be moving back down to ninety two. But I do think ninety five dollar a barrel oil is pretty much where we should be at, um, and so I'm going to be a seller above ninety five, above one hundred, and I'm going to be a buyer below ninety five, around ninety two, um, for the rest of the year probably, until I see something very drastically change in that sort of um, landscape. Um, other than that, we took uh, two exits on our Hanson's Natural Foods for a half a gain and a half percent gain and 1.2 percent gain, small gains, um, but they were nice to get after we've been holding that stock for a good amount of time. Um, and it looks very close to a breakout, finished closed above its 52-week high today, um, and we're looking for that stock to break out tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week and hopefully be able to exit that for a very nice gain. Um, we also uh, recommended some positions of Finish Line, Oracle, Bed Bath & Beyond. Those are all companies that are reporting earnings this week. We think they have a lot of upside. We also like Chimera and Taser. Um, these come from our $5 list for also more upside. Giorgio's Corner, uh, today he started a new vertical put spread in USO. He sold the July 34 and the July 33 puts for 0.15. He's looking for those to expire worthless for a nice gain there at 15 cents per contract. Um, and then first we had uh, Apple pricing coming in. To, I'm sorry, we're going to be launching our Apple pricing tonight. Um, we've had a lot of talk on the website and a lot of talk um, uh, between our traders that, you know, how wh where should Apple be? What's what's really going on there? Well, tonight we're going to take some time to sit down. Uh, we're going to look at some fundamentals. We're going to use some discounted cash flow analysis, and we're going to come up with where we think the, the stock should really be trading at, or at least it should be trading at in the next 12 months. What's its fair value estimate? Um, and be able to give you a little bit of speculation as to, you know, is this a good buying time with this pullback in Apple? Is this time to start adding some position? If you don't have some, if you do have some, is it time to add a little bit more? We'll be able to tell you that later tonight. Um, and that report will be coming out for our premium and extended value members um, 
this evening. Also, we have application software equity analytics, uh, 12 companies, 12 new companies. Those are due out by the end of this week, so look forward to those. Uh, for tomorrow, you know, we have had the five or six days, and you know everyone would probably be saying, can this continue? Can we get this rally, rally to continue? I don't think a lot of people probably even know we're rallied five or six days, given the type of bad news bears that we've had out there. Um, the Greeks' group voter conference tomorrow will be crucial. I think if it's very good, it's very good for our economy for double two reasons. First of all, it's good for the macro picker. And secondly, it's going to give strength to the euro, drop the dollar, which then will be good for equities and good for commodities. Um, we also have existing home sales coming out tomorrow. We've actually had some pretty good home numbers come out um, over the last couple of weeks. So normally I would probably say, okay, this is a definitely a reason to get scared. But we typically see home numbers come out in groupings. You know, if one or two are good, usually the rest are pretty good as well. So I'd be a little bit more bullish than normal on those, although I would not be bullish overall on them as they'd probably be weak in the larger scheme of things. Um, and then we also have some important earnings tomorrow morning. We do have uh, Barnes & Noble, Carnival, and Walgreens all coming out with earnings tomorrow morning. Uh, I think those Barnes & Noble earnings are actually probably, I think, the ones that could really give a little push to at least the consumer side of things. I think you have um, the setup there for a pretty good surprise uh, to earnings. You had Goldman coming out with an upgrade uh, yesterday, uh, excuse me, today, and, um, you know, uh, a lot of good numbers coming out, basically saying the Nook is doing way better than expected. Um, good consumer reports on it. I'm very intrigued by that play there. Um, well, that's going to do it first today. Please visit us at www.theoxygroup.com. Um, email us at contact at theoxygroup.com. Call us at 1-800-709-1160. Please become a part of our 70% plus accuracy today.